late the steamer docked last night, and then everything to get them here, Lord, the missus needed so many boxes, so many things unpacked before she could go to bed. Well, yes, then let them sleep in. And there'll be fresh morning air when they do come down. Perhaps on the piano. Don't work for me anymore, Bert. How do I say goodbye, heavens? I've had so many wonderful years in your service. We must resign ourselves, Bert. There is no choice. Jurgen needs you in his new home. You've cared for him his whole life. Yes, I'm more worried about poor Rena lying in bed at home. She's so helpless. And the new maid, she'll never learn to care for the sick. Oh, I will teach her. And I'll be sure things are right. Don't trouble yourself over my poor sister. Dear Bert. Yes? I'm also concerned I won't be able to make Mrs. Tesman happy. Maybe a little thing here and there at first. She's just so terribly picky. As one may expect. General Gobbler's daughter. Think of all that she must have been used to when the general was alive. Remember how she would go out riding with her father? That long black riding outfit? Feather in her hat? Yes, I remember. It wouldn't have occurred to me back then that she and our candidates might become a couple. No, nor me neither. But listen, Bert, so I don't forget. You mustn't call Jürgen our candidate any longer. You must say, Dr. Tessman. Yes, the missus said the same thing last night as she came in. And it's true, ma'am. Very true. They made him a doctor during the trip while he was abroad. Until he got off the steamboat and told me. I hadn't heard a word about it myself. Well, for him, I suppose anything's possible. As clever as he is. But to take up curing people as well, that's... <laughs> no, not that kind of doctor. Oh, at any rate, you'll be able to call him by his official title soon enough. What's that then? What sort of title? Oh, yes, if only you knew. Oh, good God, I wish our dear Joachim could sit up in his grave and see his son today. But listen, Bert, why have you taken off all the furniture covers? Oh, the missus told me to. Can't stand covers on the furniture, she said. They're planning on sitting in here all day? So it would seem, or at least she will. The doctor didn't say anything. Good morning, good Aunt morning, Jurgen. My dear oh. Aunt Eula. Over to see us already, so early in the day. Did you think I'd call later? Well, you can't have had much sleep. That doesn't bother me. And you got home safe from the pier, yeah? Yes, I was able to, thank God, Judge Brock. He was kind enough to walk me right to my front door. Yes, we're so sorry we couldn't have you in the, in the carriage with us. Uh, it was just all the luggage, all of Hedda's boxes. <laughs> oh, yes, she really did have a lot of boxes with her. Should I go in and ask if there's anything I can help the missus with? Oh, no, no, thank you, Bert. That won't be necessary. She said if she needs anything from you, she'll bring. All right, then. Oh, but, Bert, uh, take the suitcase. I'll just put it, uh, I'll leave it in the hole. Huh. 
just think, Aunt Eula, that suitcase was full of passages I'd copied out, notes and notes. You wouldn't believe the things you could find in those archives. Fascinating, remarkable things from the past. Things no one has known. Oh, yes, you wasted no time on that honeymoon, Jurgen. I should say not. But, Aunt Eula, take off your hat. Here, uh, let me tie the ribbon. It's almost like you were still at home. Well, no. <laughs> but in my place you've acquired such a fine and elegant hat. I bought it because of Hedda. Because of Hedda? So that Hedda wouldn't be ashamed of me if we walked down the street together. Oh, Aunt Yuli, you're always and forever thinking ahead. But here, let's sit. We can talk a while until Hedda comes down. It is simply a blessing to see you. You're right here before me. Oh, Jurgen, my brother's son, you're with me again. Here I am looking at you. You've been like a mother and father both to me. You still love your old aunts. Yes, and Aunt Rena, she's doing better, yeah? Oh, no, you... We can't expect any improvement from her. She's still lying there, the same as always. The years go by. But God's will is for me to stay with her and care for her. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do with my life, you know? And more especially as I no longer take care of you. Yes, well, well, well. Just think, you're a married man now, Jurgen, <laughs> and you married Heather Gobbler. The lovely Hedda Gobbler, how many suitors knocked on her door? Yes, I should think a number of my friends in town must envy you. <laughs> and then to have such a long honeymoon, five, almost six months. Yes, well, it was also for research that we traveled. All the books I needed to read, and the archives I needed to go through. Yes, yes, but listen, Jurgen, don't you have anything else you need to tell me? On our trip? Yes. No. Nothing. I included everything significant in my letters. I was named a professor. Uh, uh, professor, I received my doctorate degree. Um, but then I told you that yesterday. Yes, you said. But I mean, perhaps, haven't you any, well, expectations? Expectations? Good God, Jurgen, I'm your old auntie. I have expectations indeed. And? I expect to be named a professor in the very near future. Yes, yes, a professor, of course. Yes, well, one can't say for certain, but you know the lay of the land as well as I do. Yes, I can see things, Jurgen. You're right about that. But we were going to hear more about your trip. It must have cost a good deal, I should think. Yes, well, for that, my scholarship was a great help. And you were able to stretch that for two? It was a stretch, yeah. And traveling with a young lady must make things even more expensive, so I understand. It does make things more expensive, but but Hed had to have that trip. She just had to have it. Otherwise, we couldn't have worked it out. No, of course not. Uh, probably not. Uh, and that's the fashion nowadays, the grand honeymoon. And have you... Had a chance to look around your new home? Yes, I've already been up and around the house this morning. And what do you think? Excellent! Oh. Superb! <laughs> Only I'm puzzled as to what we should do with these, these two extra rooms, the little ones next to Hedda's bedroom. <clears throat> Their use will become clear in time. <laughs> yes, uh, perhaps so. Perhaps I could expand my library. Exactly. Your library could be expanded. You know, but really I'm most happy for Hedda. You know, before we were engaged, she told me she'd always dreamed of living right here, here in Councillor oh, Fox's house. And it came on the market at just the right time. We have been very lucky, haven't we? Oh, but dear, dear Jurgen, it is expensive. It's all very expensive. It'll all work itself out, though, yeah? God willing. How expensive are we talking about, approximately? It's hard to say until all the bills are in. Yes, well, luckily Judge Brock was able to secure very good terms for me. He wrote as much in his letters to Hedda. Yes, so don't worry, my dear boy. I just took out a loan for the cost of the furniture and the carpets. A loan? 
But what collateral could you provide? I used our pensions. Your pensions? They... You and Aunt Rena's pensions? It was what we had. Ha have you lost your senses? Those pensions are all you have to live on. There was no reason not to do it. It was a formality. Judge Brock arranged it. He explained the whole thing to me. A mere formality, he said. Even still. And now you will begin to earn your own living. You can pay us back. And if the family has to extend itself a little bit just to get you started, that's a pleasure. Aunt Julia, you never tire of making sacrifices for me. Just smoothing the road a little, my boy. You grew up without a father, without a mother. Nothing gives me more pleasure. You've almost arrived. Things were touch and go for a while there, but now, thank God, you're on the right road. At last. It's amazing how things work out, yeah? <laughs> and those who stood in your way, those who blocked your path, you see how far they've fallen. Fallen. Burning to earth. And the most dangerous one of all, he's fallen farthest, as he deserved to, that poor sinner. Have you any news of poor Eilert? Anything you've heard recently since I've been abroad? Only that he published a new book. What? Uh, I learned Loveborg. Just recently? Yes, or so I understand. God knows nothing much will come of it, I hope. But when your book is published, Jurgen, that will be an event. What is it about again? Cottage Industries in Medieval Brabant. <laughs> and you can write about something like that. Yes, well, it will take some time for the book to be finished. I still need to go through all the materials I gathered. Sorting and organizing, that's your strength. You're my brother's son. But at least I have a comfortable home now where I can just uh, work, work, work. <laughs> <laughs> and above all else, you have your heart's desire. Yes, head up. Isn't she the most beautiful thing oh. in the world? I think I hear her footsteps now. Good morning, Hedda. A lovely good morning to you. Good morning, my dear Miss Desmond. Visiting so early in the day, how very kind of you. Ah. And has our young lady had a pleasant night's sleep in her new home? Yes, I tolerably pleasant. <laughs> Tolerably pleasant. When I woke up, you were still sleeping like a stone. <laughs> New things take getting used to. Miss Desmond, it just takes time. What? That servant left the French doors open. There's just an ocean of sunlight in here. So we'll close them. No, 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 not that. Desmond, just pull the curtains together. That cuts the glare. Of course. Of course. Now, my dear Hedda, you can have shade and fresh air. Fresh air would be nice. These flowers. <laughs> Won't you please have a seat, Miss Tasman? Thank you. No, seeing as everything here is satisfactory, thank God. I should be getting home. I have to get back to Rena. She's she's stuck in bed waiting for me. Oh, give her my best and tell her I'll be over to visit as soon as possible. Will do that. Oh, Jurgen! I almost forgot. I brought something for you. Oh yeah? What is it? Here you are, my dear boy. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you kept these. Oh, Hedda, how sweet of you. What is it, dear? It's my old house slippers, my wool slippers, my old friends. Yes, I remember. You spoke of them so often. Yes. The whole trip. <laughs> and, and now you can see why. No thanks, I'm really not interested. Oh, just think, Aunt Rena first put these on my feet, as sick as she was. These slippers bring back so many, many memories. Not for me. Hedda may be right, Jurgen. It's just that she's part of the family now. That servant is not going to last, Tesman. Bert, he, he won't last. Why would you say that? Look. The kitchen maid left her old hat lying on the chair, and he didn't even pick it up. But, Hedda. Just think, what if someone had come to visit and seen it there? But, Hedda, that's Aunt Eula's hat. Oh. 
Yes, it's mine, of course. And it's not old, my little head. Perhaps I didn't look close. Today is actually the first time I have worn it. And what an elegant hat it is. Gorgeous. It'll do. Dear Jurgen. my parasol. Ah, here it is. That's mine, too. Not the kitchen maids. A new hat, a new parasol. How about that, Hedda? Yeah? How pretty. Very cute. Yes, they, they are, but... Aunt Eula, didn't you see how pretty and cute Hedda is today? My dear boy, that is nothing new. Hedda has been beautiful her whole life. Yes, but didn't you see how uh, voluptuous and full-figured she's become? How she's filled out while we were abroad? She's filled out? Come off it. Yes, well, you can't tell in that dress, but I've had the opportunity. Yes, right, you've had such opportunities. The mountain air in the Tyrol is positively vivifying. Yeah. Gives one new life. I'm exactly as I was before we left. Uh, yes, you say that. But is she Aunt Eula? Yeah? Lovely, lovely. Hedda is lovely. God bless and keep Hedda Tesman. For your oh, good sake. Leave me alone. I'll come and see you every day. Oh, you'll do that, won't you? <gasps> Goodbye. Goodbye. into September now. Yes, of course. We're already well into September. Did Aunt Eula seem a little strange to you? Almost formal? I barely know her. Isn't she always like that? No, not like today. Do you think she was offended by the thing with the hat? No, no. Maybe. A little in the moment. Really, what kind of manners does she... Just strewing hats about with abandon. People don't do that. Well, you can be sure she won't do it again. I'll make it up to her somehow. Oh, wouldn't you? When you go to visit her later, just invite her back this evening. Yes, I'll do that. That's just the thing, Hedda. And you know, something else you could do that would make her happy. Yeah. You could call her Eula. For my sake, Hedda, yeah? No. Tessman, God knows you can't ask me to do that. I will call her Aunt Eula once in a while. That will have to be enough. It's just that you're part of the family now. Hmm, I really don't know about that. Is something wrong, Hedda? I'm just looking at my old piano. It doesn't match the rest of the furniture. When I get my salary, we'll trade it in for a new one. No, no, we won't trade it in. That's my piano. We can move it into the other room. The new piano can be in here. When we're able to do that, I mean. All right, then. These flowers weren't here last night. Oh, uh, Aunt Eula must have brought them for you. A visiting card. Oh. We'll return later today. Now, who might that be? Who? <laughs> I don't know. It says Mrs. Elfsted. Mrs. Elfsted? Uh, Miss Reesing, she used to be known as. Be that as it may, she's the one with the irritating hair. Always attracted a lot of attention. 
Your old claim, I understand. Oh, <laughs> that was long ago, and before we met, anyway. Funny she's coming to see us. I didn't know her, but I haven't seen her once since we were in school together. I haven't seen her in God knows. How does she stand life up there, uh, isolated up there in the mountains? So, Desmond, tell me, isn't he up there somewhere? Him, either of those four? Uh, yes. Even geographically, he needs to be on top. She's come back, ma'am. The lady who left those flowers. The ones you're holding. Oh. Please, show her in. Good day, my dear Mrs. Elmston. It's so lovely to see you again. Yes, it's such a long time since we last saw each other. And for us as well, yeah? Many thanks for the wonderful flowers. Oh, please. I, I wanted to come yesterday afternoon, I, but I, I heard you weren't back from your trip yet. So you were just recently in town yourself? Yes, I arrived yesterday around noon. I was despairing when I heard you had to arrive. Despairing? What, my dear Miss Freezing? Mrs. Elmstead. There's Elfstead. nothing wrong, is there? Yes, there is, and I don't know a soul I can turn to here. Let's sit on the sofa. No, I can't rest. I can't relax right now. You can do both. Come, sit down. Well, yeah? Did something particular happen to you? Well, yes and no. Oh, with all my heart, please don't misunderstand me. The best way is to speak plainly, Mrs. Elmson. That's why you're here after all, yeah? Yes, true. I, I want to tell you, in case you don't already know, that Eilert Lofborg is in town. Lofborg? Eilert Lofborg? Here in town? Just imagine. I can hear. He's been here a week. The whole week in the city alone. It's dangerous. All the worst people, the company you can find here. But Mrs. Elmstead, what does this have to do with you? He's the children's tutor. Your children? My husband's. I don't have any of my own. So your stepchildren? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Elmstead, uh, has he... How to say this? Has he become reliable in his habits? Such that he could be entrusted? He's in... He's been no other way for several years. Several years? How about that, Hedda? I have heard as much. Not the slightest variation, I swear to you. All the same, I know him. Here in this big city with money in his pockets? I'm deathly afraid. Why didn't he stay where he was, with you and your husband? When his book was published, he couldn't rest. He couldn't relax with us any longer. So it's true. Uh, Aunt Eula said he had published a new book. Yes, a great book on cultural history and so on. Two weeks ago, it's already sold so many copies, and there's been so much discussion, it's made a sensation. Sensation? Well, huh. Really? How about that, Heather? I can hear. He can just hold out. Have you seen him here in town? No, not yet. I couldn't easily find his address, but I, I found it yesterday morning. However, I find it odd about your husband. My husband, how so? Odd that he should send you into town on such an assignment. He didn't come himself to look for his friend. Oh, no, 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 my husband has no time for that. And I had to, I had to do some errands. Well, that's different. And now I must solemnly ask you, Mr. Teskin, please treat Lothbor kindly if he should come to you, as he surely will. Oh, God, you be such good friends, and you both, you both excel in the same field. Same discipline, as far as I can tell. That used to be the case, yeah. And that is why I urge you that you and you two should keep an eye on him. It would be best. Mr. Tessman, you promise me? From the bottom of my heart, Miss Reesing. Elmstead. Mrs. Elmstead, uh, I'll do everything in my power to help poor Eilert. You can, you can rely on me. Oh, good and kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My husband relies on him so You heavily. should write to him, Tessman, because maybe if it came from you. Yes, that would be for the best, wouldn't it? And the yeah. sooner you do it, the better, preferably immediately. Oh, honey, you would. Yes, I'll write to him immediately. Um, but do you have his address? Yes, here it is. All right, good, good. I just need uh, slippers. 
here they are. And uh, make sure your letter is warm and affectionate. A nice, long, detailed letter. Just the thing. You can count on me. But please, not a word about me asking you. No, goes without saying, yeah? So, we killed two birds with one stone. What do you mean? Don't you understand that I wanted him out of the room? He can write the letter. And so I can speak with you alone. About the same thing? Yes, the very same. But there's nothing else, Mrs. Tessman, really. Oh, of course there's more, far more to it. That much I already understand. Well, why don't we sit down together? But, Mrs. Tessman, I really have to go now. No need to hurry off, right? And tell me again, how are things at home? I'd rather not discuss it. Even with me? My dear, we went to school together. Yes, but you were in the class ahead of me. I, I was so scared of you. <laughs> you were afraid, afraid of me. Yes. <laughs> I was afraid of you. Every time you passed me on the staircase, you would pull my hair. Really? I did that? Yes. And you said once you, you would burn my hair off? Oh! <laughs> that's just how we used to talk. You know. Yes, but I was so stupid back then, and since then anyway, we've grown so apart. There's such a distance between us. Our circles are so different. Well, now we can get closer. Listen. At school, we were affectionate. We called each other by our first names. Well, I think you're mistaken. Not at all. I remember it well. And that is why we should be familiar now, like in the old days. Now look, you must call me Hedda. I'm not used to such goodness and kindness. Well, well, well. And I, just as before, I will not call you Mrs. Elveston, but my dear Thora. My name is Thea. Yes, right, of course. I meant to say, yeah. <laughs> so you have a little goodness and kindness in your life, Thea? What about at home? If only I had a home, but I don't. I've never had a home. I thought it might be something like that. Yes, yes. I can't really remember exactly, didn't you? Didn't you originally come to the Elvesteads as a housekeeper? I was actually hired as a governess, but uh, his wife, his wife at the time, was sickly and she mostly had so I took on running the house as well. And in the end, you became the lady of the house. Yes, I did. How long has it been? Since I've been married? Yes. Five years. Right, that makes sense. But those five years, really, the last two or three. If only you could imagine, Mrs. Tessman. Mrs. Tessman? Say, uh, please. <laughs> I'll try. Hedda, if only you knew and could understand. I think I learned Luke Word has been up there about three years. I live with him. Yes, he's been there. Did you already know it from seeing him in town? Hardly at all. I mean, I, I knew his name. And up there, above town, he, he came to your house. Yes, he, he came to see us every day. We could talk to children. I couldn't do everything on my own. Of course, that's understandable. And your husband? Surely he was often out of town. Yes, Mrs. Tess. Heather. <laughs> As district supervisor, he often traveled. Poor, sweet Heda, you really must tell me everything, just as it happened. I will if you ask. How is your husband? I mean, to be with him. Do you get along? His intentions are the very best. He's older than you. He's at least 20 years older than you. Yes, true. But one thing leads to another. Oh, I've had enough of him. We have nothing to say. There's nothing in common between us. Still, surely he's fond of you now in his own way. Does he see anything in me? <laughs> I'm just a bauble for him. I'm not too expensive a bauble either. To keep around, I'm cheap. How stupid of you. There's no other way, not with him. He cares only for himself. Maybe his children a little. And I learned Lufborg that. I learned Lufborg. How can you say that? Oh, my dear. I mean, if your husband sends you to town, Besides, you said the same thing yourself to Tessman. Yes, yes, that may be. No, I can tell you. It'll come out no matter what. They are. Simply, my, my husband doesn't know I left. What? He doesn't know. Of course not. He wasn't there. He was traveling. Oh, Hedda, I couldn't stand it any longer. It was impossible. Even if he had been around, I'd be just as alone. So? So I packed up some of my things essentials. 
very total silence. So I left. That was it. Yes, I took the train here. My dear, dear Thayer, you, you could dare to do something like that. Yes, what in the world should I have done? But what will you tell your husband when you go back home? Back to him. Yes. Well, I will never go back to him. You've left him. Entirely and forever. Yes, I had to. Openly you do this. You can't keep a secret like that. What do you think people will say about you, Thea? He can say what he can say whatever they I don't I don't care. They can say whatever they want. Because I have done only what I had to do. What will you do now? No, all I know is I must live where Eilert is living if I am to live at all. Thea, how did this intimacy between you and Ruth work begin? It just happened. I grew to have a kind of power over him. He let go of his old habits, not because I asked, I never dared, but he could tell I didn't like them, so he let them go. It was, it was you. As they say, you, you, you reformed him, you, little, little, little Thea. Yes, <laughs> at least that's what he says. And for his part, he made me into an actual person. He taught me to think, to understand the difference between one thing and another. He was tutoring you as well. No, not tutoring me exactly. But he talked to me about such a multitude of things. And, and then the day came, the, the wonderful day when I was able to join him in his work, when I was able to help him. You were able to help him. Yes. Whatever he was writing, we worked on together. Like two comrades. Comrades. Yes, that's what he calls us, Hedda. Oh, I should be feeling truly happy right now. But I can't. I don't know if it will last. Who does? The shadow of a woman stands between us. Who? I don't know. Someone someone from his past? Someone he hasn't been able to quite forget? What did he tell you? He only hinted at it once, only. And, and? He said when they broke up, she wanted to shoot him dead with a pistol. Indeed. I, I wasn't aware that people did things like that around here. Yes, but that's why I think he must have been that red-haired singer, you know? The one who for a while he was... Yes, probably it was her. Oh, I hear she's back in town. I'm breaking apart. I think I hear Tess and Thea. All of this has to stay between you and me. Yes, yes, for God's sake. Here it is. The missive is ready to go. That's nice, but I believe Mrs. Alston has to leave now. Just give me a minute. I'll walk her to the garden gate. You, Hedda, shouldn't bear to go with her. I need to tell her something. Judge Brock is here. He says he would like to come in and say hello to everyone. Well, please, shut the job. And afterward, <laughs> listen carefully, take this letter to the mailbox. Good day. We won't presume to call so early. One may. Judge Brock, you are always welcome here. Uh, Judge Brock, Miss Reason. Uh huh. Pleased to meet you. It's so amusant to see you in the light of day, Judge Brock. How different am I? <laughs> yes, a little younger, perhaps. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> but look at Hedda. Look how radiant she is today. Physically, Leave she... Leave me out of this. You should be thanking Judge Brock for his trouble. All the trouble he took. It was pure pleasure. Yes, you are a faithful and kind soul. My friend here is eager to depart. Au revoir, Judge Brock. I shall return. Farewell, Mrs. Tessman. Good day, madam. So your wife must be reasonably happy. And we cannot, we cannot express our gratitude enough. Which is to say, there are still a few necessities we need to take care of. Still a few things that we lack. We'll probably have to buy a few things. Really? Yes, but never fear. Hedda said she can find everything that we need. Hmm. But, Judge Brock, why don't we sit down? Make yourself comfortable. Hey, yes, thank you very much. Uh, but only for a moment. Dear Tessman, there is something I would like to talk with you about. Oh? Ah, I see. Now comes the serious part of the welcome back party. Oh, no, with money matters, there's not as much of a hurry, although I 
do wish we could have set things up more economic. That was impossible. You can't forget that Hedda. You know Hedda all too well. I can never upset her up with a middle class house. No, go into Well, there's the impediment. Well, luckily I'll be receiving my professorship soon. Sometimes these things can take a, a little time. Why, have you heard anything more as of late? Nothing very specific, no. There is something new I can tell you, though. Yeah? Your old friend, Eiler Milborg, is back in town. Eiler, I, I knew that, actually. Really? Then how did you hear? From the young woman who just left with Hedda. I see. Now, what was her name? I didn't quite hear. Ah, Miss... Ah. Mrs. Elston. Yes, yes, the uh, district supervisor's wife. Yes, he has been staying up on the mountain with him. And I hear to my great joy that he's become quite a decent man again. So they say. Yes, and I hear that he's published a new book. Oh, he has indeed done so. And that it's caused quite a stir, yeah? It's caused quite the sensation. Yes, well, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. He and his remarkable talent. Unfortunately, I was convinced he was done for. That was the general view. Yes, I, I just, I wonder what he's going to do now. What on earth he's going to live on, you know? All the live on day, our testament worries about what other people are going to live on. Oh, Hedda, we were just talking about poor Islet Loveborg. Really? What's the matter with him? Well, he, he certainly squandered his inheritance long ago. And he can't very well write a new book every year, yeah? I just wonder how he's going to get by, you know? Well, perhaps I can fill you in there. Yeah? yeah. Remember his relatives, his, his family, they have considerable weight around here. His relatives. Unfortunately, they really let him fall. He used to call him the brightest hope of the family. They used to. But he's forfeited that title now. Who knows? How could the elves since they reformed him? And with this book coming out. Yes, well, we should all do everything in our power to help poor Ivo. I've just written a letter. Yeah. I invited him to come visit us this evening. Tessman, you wanted to come to my stag party tonight. Mm -hmm. You promised me last night. Yes. Did you forget, Tessman? Uh, yes, it must have slipped my mind. Well, in any event, you can relax because he won't come here. Oh, why would you say that? Well, my dear Tessman, well, you too, Mrs. Tessman. I, I can't be responsible for keeping you in the dark. There's a, a small matter of, um, a small matter with, uh, with, with Island? with him and with you. My dear Judge Brock, what do you say? I'm saying that uh, well, you should be anticipating that your appointment may not be made as quickly as you would like or expect. Why? Has something changed? The position is to be decided by means of a competition. A competition? Hedda! I can hear. But... Not... Not with no, the very same. No. I'd have lived for it. Oh, no, 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 no. This is utterly inconceivable. This is, it's an impossibility. We may need to entertain it. But this shows such a remarkable lack of consideration for me. For indeed, I am a married man. Hedda and I got married on my expectations. Taking on all those debts. I even took a loan from Aunt Eula. My God, the job was in the bag. Probably still get the job, but only after you compete for it. Think about it, Tessman. It's a duel. How can you be taking this so lightly? Not lightly at all. I eagerly await the outcome. Yes, well, in any event, Mrs. Tessman, it's good you now know how things stand. I mean, before you begin making those little purchases, I hear you're threatening. Not up for discussion. Oh, no? Hmm. Yeah. Impediments. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm finished with my afternoon walk, I'll be back to pick you up. Yes, uh, farewell. Uh, my apologies, I'm, I'm a little lost. Au revoir, my dear judge. It's my very best wishes. Goodbye, Tessman. I do. Yes, far farewell. Uh, you must excuse me. Oh, Hedda. Probably shouldn't have taken such risks heading off on an adventure like this. Is that what you're on? Yeah, Hedda. And it cannot be denied, it was an adventure. To go out into the world, 
to get married, <laughs> to build hearth and home on nothing but your expectations. Perhaps so. At least we have a comfortable home. The home we always dreamed of. The one we fell in love it over. It was just an understanding that to live as comrades, we would need to have an open house. We would need to entertain in an appropriate fashion. Yeah, and, and it made me so happy to imagine that. To see you as the lady of the house, uh, surrounded by her select circle. Yes, yes, yes. I, I suppose we're just going to have to be on our own for a while, setting up the house. And Eula can come by and visit from time to time. Nothing is as you would have wished it, I suppose. A second servant in livery, of course, will be impossible. Unfortunately, I think keeping another servant will be impossible. Just not possible. And the horse? The riding horse. Which I should probably not even think about. God forbid, no. That should be obvious. Well, at any rate, I have one thing to cheer me up now. Oh, thank God. And what's that, Hedda? My pistols, Jorgen. The pistol? General Gobbler's pistol. For God's sake, Hedda, leave those dangerous toys alone, for my sake, yeah? Yes, as I said, forever and ever. 
leave it. But uh, well, if Tessman's such a rising star, something might be worth it. Oh, Tessman is, he's a professional, my dear. Oh, no doubt. And professionals are not always the most pleasant traveling companion. Not for the duration. Not even a professional whom you love. Oh, God, please, don't use that awful word. Well, now, so, Mrs. Hella. Well, why don't you try it? Listening to nothing but cultural history from morning till night. <laughs> Forever and ever. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, and to top it off, this stuff about medieval cottage industries is the absolute worst. <laughs> so, tell me then, how am I to understand how you... How your contestant and I got married. Well, yes, put it your way. Does it really seem that strange to you? Yes and no, Mrs. Hella. There's always a last dance. My time was up. Not what I wanted to say. Not what I wanted to think. Well, you have no reason to think so. Reasons. And your contestant, you have to admit that he is proper in all his affairs. Proper and outstanding, thank God. And there's nothing particularly comical that I see in him. Do you see anything? Comical? No, I, uh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Well then, at any rate, he's a diligent researcher. And it's not impossible he might one day actually make something of himself. I was under the impression that you, like everyone else, were of the opinion that he would certainly become a great man one day. I thought, and he most definitely wanted to provide for me. Why shouldn't I accept such an offer? Of course, in that light. It really was far more than any of my other suitors were prepared to do. Miss Rill, I can't speak for the others, but, uh, but as for me, as you well know, I've always held a certain respect for the bonds of marriage, <laughs> for the most part, Mrs. Hedda. Oh, I never had any expectations with you. Oh, all I desire is an intimate circle of friends who uh, depend on me in word and deed. Friends I can visit. Friends who trust me to visit. Trusted by the master of the house, you mean. By the mistress, quite frankly. My husband, too, of course. Such a, uh, what should we say, a triangular relationship. Great convenience for all involved. Yes. Many times when we were abroad, I missed that extra man. Oh, to be sitting one on one in a railway compartment. Well, fortunately, your journey's over. No. We'll be traveling a long, long time. I'm just at the first stop. Surely you can jump off the train and stretch your legs a bit. I don't jump off. Really? Never? There's always someone who's. Who's watching your legs, you mean? Something like that. <laughs> That won't do. I'll just stay and sit where I am, one-on-one. -on -one. What if the third party were to uh, join the couple? Yes, you see, that's something else entirely. Yes, the faithful, the understanding Who friend. can talk about the most spirited things? Without even a hint of a professional love. Um... That's certainly a relief. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And the triangle is complete. Moving right along. <laughs> Lugging all this stuff around can really make you hot. I'm sweating like a pig, Hedda. Oh. Look here. Look who it is, uh, Judge Brock. Dirk didn't say anything. Yes, well, I, I came in through the garden. Oh. Well, what are all those books? Oh, oh, just some professional journals that I really need to read. Professional? Your professional journals, Mrs. Tessman. Do you really need more professional journals? Of course, darling. Uh, one really has to keep up with what people are writing and publishing. Indeed, one does. Oh, and look, I got a chance to pick up Eilert Lofborg's new book. You'll want to take a look at no, it, yeah? No, no, thank you. Yeah? Maybe, yes, maybe later. I got to look through it on my way home. Yes? And what would you say as a professional? <laughs> I would say it's remarkable how measured it all is. He never used to write like that before. But now to take all these upstairs, cutting the pages, pure pleasure. <laughs> but first to freshen up a bit. There's no rush, is there? Oh, no, don't worry, there's a, no rush. All right, then. Ah, head up. The thing is, Aunt Eula won't be able to come visit you this evening. No? No. What? Because of her hat. Oh, no. Don't think that of, of Aunt Eula. It's, it's just that Aunt Rena is doing so poorly. Hmm, as she always is. 
Yes, but today she's doing particularly poorly. The poor thing. Yes, well then it stands to reason that the other aunt should stay with her. I'll find something to do. Yes, but, Hedda, Aunt Eula, you don't know how lighthearted she's been. She's so pleased how, how plump you've become. Always with these aunts. Uh, what's that? Nothing. Well, all right then. <laughs> so, what's the story with the hat? Oh, uh, something that happened with Miss Tessman early this morning. She had taken off her hat and left it lying on the chair. And I, I pretended like I thought it was the maid's hat. Oh, my God, Mrs. Hedda, you, you didn't do that to such a fine yeah, old woman. Well, you see, something just comes over me that I can't control, that I cannot understand. I don't even know how to explain it to myself. You're not really very happy. I don't even know why I should be happy. Or maybe you can tell me. For one thing, you finally have the home you've always longed for. Come on, you're not that credulous. You really believe that fairy tale. There's nothing to it then. Oh, of course, there's something to it. Well? There's, well, well there's, last summer, I let Tessman walk me home from a party. Yes, unfortunately, I had to take a different route. That's true. You were taking different routes last summer. Shame on you, Mrs. Hedda. Now, you and Tessman. One evening, we walked past this house, and, and Tessman, the poor man, he was so frustrated because he didn't know what to talk about. So I took pity on this learned man. <laughs> you took pity? <laughs> yes. It was the right thing to do. And so, just to help him out, out of sheer carelessness, I said that I would love to live in this house. Nothing more than that? Not that night. Oh, but later on. Yes, my dear judge, my carelessness had consequences. Yes, well, this is all too often the case with carelessness, Mrs. Hedda. Thank you. In the prattle about the folk mansion, you see, Jorgen Tessman and I found common ground. And that is what led to an engagement, and a wedding, and a honeymoon, and everything else. Yes, as you make your bed, so shall you lie in it. This is priceless. So basically, for the entire affair, you didn't give a damn. No, I didn't. But now that everything's been set up so beautifully for you. Oh. <laughs> it smells like lavender and dried roses in every room. Or maybe that's just Aunt Eula. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suspect that's probably State Councilor Fox Lake wife. <laughs> yes, it's the smell of decay. It reminds me of a corsage from the ball, but the day after. Oh, my dear judge, you cannot possibly imagine how horribly bored I'm going to be out here. Well, is it because your life has no responsibility, Mrs. Heller? A responsibility? Something to allure me? Yes, that would be preferable, of course. God knows what sort of responsibility it should be. Sometimes I think about it, but of course I could. Oh, I don't know. Let's hear it. What if I could talk Tessman into becoming active in politics? <laughs> no, listen, anything to do with politics, Tessman couldn't handle it utterly and totally. <laughs> well, I can see that, but what if I could make him do it anyway? Yes. What a satisfaction that would bring you. If only he could bring himself to do it. But why would you want this for him? Because I'm bored, can't you hear? So do you really think it's impossible for Tessman to become a cabinet minister? Oh, I think for something like that to happen, he'd have to become considerably richer. Well, there you have it. Such were the circumstances for which I was destined. And that is what makes life so pathetic. So utterly ridiculous, which it is. Well, uh, I think the blame lies elsewhere. Where's that? You've never experienced anything that's moved you. Anything serious, you mean? Call it what you'd like, but something like that may yet happen for you. Oh, you're talking about the difficulties of the stupid professorship. That's Tessman's business. I'm not going to waste one second with you. Well, enough of that, then. But uh, well, what if? What if one might call in a more elevated language, solemn and responsible duties should 
find their way to you. New duties, my little Mrs. Helen. Enough! Nothing like that will ever happen. We can talk about it in a year from now, at the very latest. I have no interest in anything of the kind, Judge Brock. Nothing interests me less than such duties. Shouldn't you, like all women, have a, an interest in such a calling? Sometimes I think I am meant to do just one thing. Yes, what? Bore myself to death. There, now you know. True enough, right? Here comes our professor. Mrs. Hedoff. Tyler Loveboard hasn't said he isn't coming, yeah? No. Then he'll be here momentarily. Do you really think he'll come? Yes, I'm convinced of it, since everything you told us this morning was mere baseless rumors. But what? Yes, well, at least Aunt Eula is convinced he would never stand in my way. Yeah, well, all right, then. Everything's settled. But I've waited as long as possible for him. Well, we have time. Nobody ever arrives before 7, 7.30. Then we'll sit and keep Hedda entertained. And in the worst case, Mr. Loveboard will just have to stay here with me. What do you mean, the worst case, madam? In the case that he doesn't want to go with you and Hester. But do you think that's proper? Remember, Aunt Eula can't come tonight. But Mrs. Elmstead is coming. And the three of us can have tea together. <laughs> yes, that would be just the thing. Just the thing. <laughs> sure ain't the best thing for him. <laughs> How so? God, madam, you've made fun of my stag parties often enough. Parties designed exclusively for upstanding men, firm of principle, you said. Mr. Elves, Mr. Lindford is an upstanding man of principle, a reformed sinner. Ma'am, there's a gentleman here who wishes to come in. Let him in. Him, I'm sure of him. Just imagine. Ah, I learned. So we meet again. Thank you for your letter. Um, now for you, my hand, Mrs. Tessman. Welcome, Mr. Loveborg. I don't know whether you gentlemen... Oh, Judge Brock, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the honor is mine. It's been a number of years, hmm? Yes, well, uh, I learned. Come in, make yourself at home. Uh, right, Hedda? Hey, look, I, I hear you're planning on settling down here in town again. I'd like to. Yes, well, that's, that's reasonable. Um, I was able to pick up your new book. Uh, I haven't had time to read it yet. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can save yourself the trouble. It... Oh, well, why would you say that, Eilert? Oh, because there's nothing much to it. But, my dear Eilert... I hear it's been so widely received. That's exactly what I wanted. I wrote it so everyone would like it. Yeah, quite reasonable. <laughs> uh, because I'd now like to try to find a position for myself to, to start over again. Uh, yes, you'd like that, wouldn't uh, you? But if, if something comes of this, you're going to test me, and, uh, then you can read it, because this is what is true. This is me, myself. Uh, and this is? Uh, the sequel. The sequel? Uh, to what? To my book. The new one? Yeah. But, but my dear Eilert, you're writing about the present day. Absolutely. This one deals with the future. The, f the future? But we don't know anything about it. No, but there are things we can say about it. Look, look, look. Okay. This isn't your okay. handwriting. I dictated the whole thing. It's divided into two parts. This first part um, deals with the cultural forces of the future. And then behind here, the, um, the second deals with the actual course of cultural development. Amazing. It, it never would have occurred to me to write about something like this. No, it wouldn't. I brought it because I wanted to read a little of it to you this evening. Oh, uh, that would be nice, but tonight I, I don't know if we can manage. All right, that's another time. There's no rush. But I wanted to tell you, Mr. Lovebore, that I'm throwing a party tonight at my house, mostly for testament, you understand. Ah, uh, well, I don't want to keep you any longer. I'll, uh... oh, please, please allow us the pleasure of your company this evening. No, I cannot. Oh, <laughs> come now. Come much. now. We're a small select circle. Maybe we'll find something spirited, as Mrs. He uh, Mrs. Tessman might say. Of uh, this I have no doubt, but nonetheless... You can bring your manuscript and read it to Tessman in my house. I have room for that. 
Yes, that would be nice. You have time enough for that, I looked. But my dear, I really don't think that Mr. Lukeworth wants to. I'm convinced that Mr. Lukeworth would much rather stay here with you. Oh, with you, madam. And with Mrs. Elder. Ah, she and I had a brief encounter this afternoon. Did you really? Yes, well, she's coming over. And for that reason, it's almost a necessity that she stay in Mr. Lukeworth, for she has no one else that can accompany her home. I see, uh... Yes, well, thank you very much, madam. Yes, then I, I too shall stay. I just need to tell the servant to set one more plate. So, Eilert, this bit about the future, is that what you plan to lecture on? Oh, yes. yes. Because I heard at the bookstore that you were planning on giving a lecture series this fall. I'd like to. You can't blame me for it, Tessima. No, God, God forbid. I understand, though. Put you in a bit of a bind. I could never ask you to do something on my behalf, of course. I'll wait until after you receive your appointment. Oh, you will? So, <laughs> so you won't be applying for the position? No, I, I, I only want to vanquish you in the world of ideas. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Eula was right. Hedda, Eilert has no intention of standing in our way. Oh, leave me out of this. But... Dear Judge Brock, surely you have something to say about this. Yeah, well, I'll say your um, honor and victory, then. It might be something wonderful. I should say so. I think you've been struck by lightning. I... I should say so. God, I believe uh, quite the thunderstorm has passed by us. Hmm? Wouldn't you gentlemen like to go in and have a glass of cold punch? On our way out? Just a thing. Yes, just a thing. Especially as I find myself in quite a light-hearted mood. There you go. And one for you too, Mr. Lukeport. Uh, no, thank you. Not for me, thanks. Uh, my God, man, cold punch is not poison. Not to the best of my knowledge. Uh, not for everyone. I will entertain Mr. Lukeport here. Yes, you do that, Hedda. And now I can show you some photographs, Mr. Lukeport, if it's all right. Tessman and I, we made a little tour of the Tyrol on our way home. This one, those are the Ortlers. See, Tessman wrote it there, the Ortler Range by Marana. And a gobbler. Hey, psst. And a gobbler. Yes, that was my name back when we were acquainted with. And for the rest of my life, I will have to forget how to say head a gobbler? Yes, you'll have to. And I think you should start practicing. The sooner the better, I should think. Head a gobbler, Mary. And, <laughs> and to Jurgen Tessman? Yes, that's how it is. Edda. Throw yourself away like We'll that. have none of that. None of what? <clears throat> none of what? And this one, Mr. Lukeford, looks down into the Alpenso uh, Valley. Valley. Just look at those <laughs> mountains. Tell us, those strange looking mountains, what were they called? Ah, uh, yes, those were the Dolomites. Those are the Dolomites, Mr. Dolomite. Lukeford. <laughs> anyway, head up. I was just wondering if we could get you something at any rate. Yes, please. And maybe some tea cakes? No cigarettes? No. Well, all right then. Please tell me, Hedda, how could you do it? If you do not start calling me Mrs. Tessman, I shall never speak to you again. Can't I call you Hedda when we're alone? No. You can think it, but you cannot say it. <laughs> I see. You might shake your love for uh, Jurgen Tessman. Love? Come on, tell me another one. So there's no love. And there isn't any infidelity either. I'm not <clears throat> interested in that. Edda, please tell me just one thing. Just the one. What? Really. Here we are, all the good stuff. Why are you serving us yourself? Because it brings me such enormous pleasure to wait on you, Hedda. But you brought two glasses. Mr. Lukeford doesn't want any. Mrs. Elmstead. True, for Mrs. Elmstead. Ah, uh, you forgot, didn't you? Yes. Yeah.
because we've been so immersed in these photographs. Do you remember this little village here? Ah, uh, yes. That was the one at the base of the Brenner Pass. Yes, where we spent the night. I met that spirited hiking party. Ah, uh, yes. If only you could have been there with us, Eilert. <laughs> our relationship. Perhaps there wasn't any love there either. No, not a trace, not a flicker of love. I wonder. For me, it was like we were two comrades. Two very intimate friends, ones who were very, very trusting of one another. That, that was how we wanted it. I remember there was something beautiful, alluring, something brave. Visited you in the afternoon with your father, the general. Sit by the window reading the newspaper. Get back to us. Us on the corner sofa. Always immersed in the same magazine. Because we didn't have a photo album.
my dear, dear Thea, come in. Finally, Thea, you cannot imagine how I've waited for you. I suppose I should have gone in and said hello to your husband. Don't first. worry about it. Let them sit. They're leaving soon anyway. They're leaving. They're going carousing. Not you. Uh, no. Sister, who what will be staying with us? It's so beautiful here. No, 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 not there. Thea, come sit over here by me. I want to sit in the middle. As you like. Isn't she uh, lovely to look at? Just to look at? Yes. Because the two of us, she and I, were the true comrades. We believe in one another unconditionally. We can sit here and talk over each other. Unveiled, Mr. Lupor. Well? Eva, I'm so happy. This thing he tells me I didn't tell does he now? And the courage to act, Mrs. Desmond. She does not lack courage. Oh, courage, he. Yes, courage. There is a necessity. How do you mean? To simply endure life. Now, my dear Thea, you really should have a nice glass of cold punch. No, no, thank you. I never drink anything like that. Well, then you, Mr. Luke. No, thank you. Me neither. No, none for him either. Perhaps if I insist. Okay. I have no power over you, poor me. Not now, you don't. Said in all seriousness, I, I think you really should for your own sake. How so? So, or better yet, for the sake of other people. What do you mean? That? Otherwise, people might see your discomfort, see the uncertainty in yourself. What they like from them. Yes, that's right. I saw it quite clearly earlier. Judge Brock. Uh, Judge Brock, he. He what? smiled scornfully when he saw that you didn't dare sit. No, I, I prefer to sit here and spend time in your company. Yes, that's reasonable, isn't it? Hedda? But the judge couldn't see that. I saw him twist up his mouth and exchange a little. A little look with Tesman when he saw that you didn't dare join them for a harmless little evening out. Didn't dare. You said I didn't dare? I didn't say that, but that's what the judge thought. I'll let him think. So, you're not going to go? No. I'm staying here with you and Thea. Yes, Hedda, you can understand why. A man of principle. A man of fixed principles. Oh, to be such a well, isn't that just what I said this morning when you ran over here so distraught? <laughs> distraught. Please, you can see for yourself that it's quite unnecessary to be running around so deathly afraid. So why don't the three of us do something spirited? What do you have in mind, Mrs. Dustin? What are you saying? What are you doing? Deathly afraid. For me. Uh, well, this was my true comrade faith in me. My dearest friend, you must listen. To your help, Thea. Oh, Anna, so that's what you wanted? Wanted me? Are you out of your mind? And to your help, Mrs. Tessman. Thank you for your, your honesty. Long may it live. All right, all right. Don't forget, you're in polite company. So, Thea, please do be straight with me. Of course. <laughs> Does Elstead know you uh, ran off to see me? Oh, Hedda, do you hear what he's asking me? Could it be, uh... Oh! You know, Elstead, you wanted... Could it be Elstead himself made you do it? Need me back in his office. Ah, he just missed me at his card table. That's a shame. How could he? No. I got an idea. Here's to the old supervisor. Mr. Elson. Sure. That's enough. <laughs> Don't forget, you're supposed to be going to read your testimony.
that was stupid of me, Sam, to construe things like that. So. Please don't be angry at me, my dear, dear comrade. You, you have to know, both you and her, that I, I who had sunk so low, so now I pull myself together again. With your help, Sam. Thank God. Mrs. Desmond, time has come. That it has. For me as well, Judge Brock. Oh, don't do it. It was so kind of you to invite me. Well, you are coming too. Uh, yes, thanks very much, I will. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. I'd wonderful. really like to read you some of that manuscript before I submit it. So. Yes, wonderful, good. But someone will have to pick up Mrs. Elmstead. Someone will turn up. <laughs> yes, someone. Um, Mrs. Elstead, of course, I'll come back and escort her home around 10 o'clock. Mrs. Desmond, will that do? Of course, that will do wonderfully. Beautiful. Yes, good, but uh, don't, don't wait up for me. <laughs> My dear, stay out as long, as long as you like. Mr. Lefort, then I will wait here until you return. Uh, understood. Sir, the, the party train is leaving the station. Well, perhaps we'll find something speared. There's a, I've heard it put by a certain beautiful woman. Well, if only the certain beautiful woman could be invisibly present. Why invisible? Only to observe some of your unveiled spiritedness. <laughs> oh, not recommended for a certain beautiful woman. Well, <laughs> yes, you're good. Yes, you are, Hedda. <laughs> yes, well, farewell, ladies. Farewell. I'll be back in ten. Oh, Edda. Edda, how is this all going to turn out? At ten o'clock, that's when he's coming. I can see him now. A crown of grapevines in his head. Overheated and crude. Yes, if only he could be that, like that. Can't you see that he's got control over himself? He's a free man for the rest of his life. God, yes, if only he could be the way you see him. That's exactly how he'll be coming back. You can doubt in him all you like. I believe in him. And soon we'll both find out. You're up to something, Hedda. Be that as it may. For just once in my life, I would like to have some power over a man's fate. Don't you already? No, I don't. I never have. So rich. <laughs> I think I will have to burn your hair off. <laughs> Let me go, Seth. You're scaring me. <laughs> Tea is ready in the dining room, Mom. Good, here we go. Um, no, no, I, I'd rather go home by myself. Uh, tell me. Nonsense, you little fool. Drink some tea. And then at 10 o'clock, Ireland Lubborg will appear. A crown of grapevines in his head. just brought this letter. A letter? Give it to me. No, it's for Dr. Tesman, ma'am. I see. It was Miss Tesman's maid who brought it. I'll just put it on the table. When I turn down the lamp, it's almost out of oil. Yes, it'll be light soon. It is light outside, ma'am. It's morning already. No one's back. I thought this might happen. You did. Yes, when a certain gentleman had come back into town, and we've heard of that don't, gentleman. Don't talk so loud. You'll wake Mrs. Tesman. The letter 
Fargo's sleep for the thing. <laughs> Shall we get the fire going again? Not on my account, thanks. Is it there? It's past seven. What time did Tuspin come home? He's not home. He hasn't come home yet. No one's come back. And we waited. We watched and we waited until four o'clock. I waited for him. We could have spared ourselves the effort. You were sleeping. Yes, I, I think I slept quite well. Did you? No, Hedda, I couldn't. It was impossible to sleep. Now, now, there's nothing to be afraid of. I know exactly what happened. What do you think? Well, me. They obviously spent far too much time at the judges. Of course they did, still. And Tespin? He didn't want to come home in the middle of the night, knock over the furniture. He maybe wanted to hide after his carousing. But how could he still be gone? He obviously went to his aunt's to sleep it off. They keep his old room. No, he can't be at their place. He just got a letter from Miss Tessman. It's right there. Oh. Yes, that's Aunt Eula's handwriting. Well, he must have spent the night at the judges. And I alert Lutborg is sitting around, crown of grapevines in his hair, reading, no doubt. Oh, Edda, you're saying things even you don't believe. Edda, you really are a little flock. Unfortunately, I am. And you look dead tired. I am dead tired. That is why you should do exactly as I tell you. You will go to my room and you will lie down for a while. No, no, no. I won't be able to sleep. Of course you will. But your husband will be home any moment. I have to find out. I'll let you know when he gets back. You promise, Hedda? Rely on me. Now, go and lie down. Thank you. I'll try. So early? Yes, today I feel very industrious. Here I thought you'd still be in bed. Don't talk so loud. Mrs. Elstead is in my room. Oh, Mrs. Elstead spent the night? Yes, no one ever came to pick her up. No, no one did. Did you have a good time with the judges? So you were worried about me? No, it never occurred to me to worry about you. I was just wondering if you had a good time. Yes, of course. At first, at least. Uh, first, Eilert read to me. We got there about an hour early or so. Just imagine. And Judge Brock was hosting and so on, and, uh, and so Eilert read to me. Tell me about it. Oh, Hedda, you can't imagine what a work he's written. Uh, undoubtedly one of the most amazing things ever written. Well, that doesn't mean much to me. But, Hedda, I must confess, Something ugly came over me while he was reading. Something ugly? I sat there and envied Eilert for being able to write something so great. Just imagine. Yes, yes, I'm imagining. And yet, it's clear to me that he, oh, with all of his remarkable talent, that he's just irredeemable, unfortunately. Because he has too much courage in his conviction. 
Oh my god, no. That he cannot moderate his habits. Like he has been recently, until now. Yes. Uh, last night, Hedda. It was something of a bacchanal. He had a crown of grapevines in his hair. A crown? Uh, I didn't see any grapevines. But he did go on for a long time about a story about a woman who had intoxicated him while he was working. His words. Did he say her name? No, no, but it must have been Mrs. Elmstead, so watch out for her. Yeah. <laughs> when did you finally find ways? At the end of the night. We were the last to leave, and we left at about the same time. Judge Brock came out with us to get some fresh air, and that's when we decided I would have exceeded his... Yeah, I believe you. That's, well... Anyway, it was the strangest part, Hedda. Actually, I should say the saddest. I'm ashamed to say it, just to tell you. Well? Well, as we were heading home, I hung back for a minute. Just a couple of minutes, just imagine. And? And? and as I rushed to catch up with the others, oh, Hedda, you wouldn't believe what I found there in the sidewalk. No idea. Hedda, you can't tell a soul, for either's sake, yeah? Eilert's precious, irreplaceable manuscript. And he just left it in the street. He didn't even notice. And you still have it. You didn't give it back to him. No, I, I couldn't. Not, not in the condition that Eilert was in. Didn't you tell the others, then? No, no. Uh, I didn't want to for Eilert's sake, of course. So no one knows that you have Eilert Luftwort's manuscript? No, no, and, and no one else needs to. What did you say to him later? I didn't say anything else to him. We continued home. He went home with a couple of others. And they must have taken him home. Yeah, yeah, they must have taken him home. Uh, and Judge Brock went home by himself. And where did you wander off to after that? Oh, I, I went with a couple of others to someone's house, and we had our... Morning coffee. Oh, Hedda, they should really call it night coffee. Yeah? Yeah? Anyway, <laughs> when I rested up some and, and poor Eilert slept it off, then I'll return to me. No, 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 don't give it back to him. Not just yet, I mean, I, I want to read it first. Why? My God, Hedda, I can't do that. You can't? No. What if he wakes up and looks for the manuscript? There's no copy. He told me so himself. Can't you just rewrite it? Write it again? <laughs> no, he can't rewrite it. It, it was an inspiration. Yes, that, that very well may be. I, I'm sure you're right. And there's a letter for you. Oh, imagine that. Came first thing this morning. It's Aunt Eula's handwriting. Aunt Rena is dying. Mm, that was to be expected. Oh, if I'm to see her one last time, I, I'd better hurry. I, I'd better run. <coughs> so you'll be running? Yes, my hat is in the foyer here. I'll... Oh, yes, sir. Hedda, if you could bring yourself to visit her with me. No, no, Jensen. Don't ask me to do that. Want to see any suffering or death? Spare me from anything repellent. Yes, uh, of course, uh, of course. Uh, I, I really must be hurrying. I must be going. You'd better run then. Judge Brock is outside. He would like to know if he can come in. No, I, I can't see anyone right now. I can. Please send the judge in. <laughs> and afterward. Yes, give it to me. No, no, no. 
I'll look after it for you for now. Well, aren't you the early bird? Indeed. Open Adam so soon. Yes, I, I really must be going. Aunt Rena is on her deathbed. I, I must be running. Please go, son. Go. Yes. Farewell. Farewell. I, I must be running. I trust you had a very spirited evening. I haven't even changed my clothes. <laughs> well, that makes three of us. Yes, quite. So, which of our adventures did Tristan relate to you? Nothing spirited. He stayed up late and had night coffee. I heard about the coffee. <laughs> uh, and Newport wasn't with them. No, they took him home first. Tristan, too? No, but a couple of others, he said. <laughs> yes, that your Desmond is genuinely trusting soul. He's naive. There's more to know them. Oh, yes, yes. The thing's not quite so simple. Well, shall we sit down together in the front? You tell, and I shall listen. I have very good reasons to take my guest home. Perhaps should I say some of my guests home last night? Among them was Eiler Blue. Oh, yes, I must confess, he was one. Now, you're making me very curious, Judge Draw. So, do you know where he and some of the others spent the rest of the evening? If it can be told, then tell me. If it can be told, they went to a very lively soiree. With spirited company. Oh, the most spirited. <laughs> oh, please, tell me more, Judge Draw. The Lou Board had been invited beforehand. I knew exactly what I was dealing with. At first, he declined to attend, regards himself as a changed man, as you know. When he's up at the Alps, did he go? Yes, well, unfortunately, Mrs. Hedda, a, uh, a mood came over him at my house last night. So I heard he was rather intoxicated. <laughs> Enormously intoxicated. Though it was intoxicated for him in another sense, I should think. Unfortunately, well, us men, we're not always as principled as we should be. Except in present company, of course, with <laughs> Yes, we have. In short, in the end, <clears throat> he ended up in Miss Diana's salon. Miss Diana? Yes, Miss Diana. She holds soirees for a select circle of lady friends and uh, their admirers. She has red hair. Well, that's the one. She's a sort of, she's a singer. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I don't know what it she is. I'm surprised you haven't heard of her. Heinrich Lubor was one of her most ardent admirers in his prime. And how is their reunion? <laughs> Less than amicable, it seems. Miss Diana went from loving embrace to violent assault. Against Lubor? Yes, yes. He accused her and her friends of robbing him. Maybe his wallet was missing, some other things. Anyway, he caused a terrible scene. And the result was? The result was, um, should we say, uh, a brawl. There's a brawl between the men and the women. Fortunately, the police finally came. The police? Yes. An expensive bit of fun for that madman, Lou Boy. What? Yes, well, supposedly he uh, resisted arrest, punched a policeman in the face, tore his coat into it. They had to take him to the police station. How do you know all this, Judge Brock? From the police. I had to talk to them. So that was their reunion. And he didn't have a crown of grapevines in his head. Grapevines, Mrs. Hill? But now tell me, Judge Brock, what are you really looking after and tailing Eilert Luke for? Well, mostly because I cannot take it lightly that during the interrogation, it will come out that he was at my house. There will be an interrogation? Yes, of course, a certainty. But it seems to me that as a friend of your household, I'm obligated to provide you with testament with complete clarity into Luke Borg's nocturnal activities. Why would you do that? Because he may ask you for protection. Why? But around you, Mrs. Hedda, we're not blind. And as Mrs. Elstead, it won't be long before she'll be telling him. If they want to talk, there are plenty of places they can meet. Not like here. Besides, every upstanding household will be close to Blue Board from now on. Which includes my home, too, you mean? Yes, of course. <laughs> now, I must confess it would be a little more than embarrassing if this gentleman were to spend his time here. <clears throat> he uh, unwelcomed or unnecessarily tried to force his way into uh, into the, the triangle. Yes, quite. Mm. I would lose a home. Only you. Cock up the lock, that's your goal. Yes, Mrs. Heather, that is my goal. And for this goal, I will fight with every necessary means. You're a dangerous man, Judge Brock. When push comes to shove. You think so? Yes, I'm beginning to think so. 
And so long as you don't use your teeth and claws against me. Well, you may be right about the me, Mrs. Hedda. Who knows what sorts of schemes I might concoct under some circumstance or other. Now, listen here, Judge Brock. That almost sounds like a threat. No, no, far from it. The triangle, you see, must be defended and protected by three. Agreed. I've said all I've wanted to say, and now I must be home again. So, farewell, Mrs. Hannah. Uh, are you leaving through the garden? Oh, yes, yes, it's quicker. Oh, yes, yes, and it's also the hidden path. Very true. But, as you know, I have nothing whatsoever against the hidden path. Sometimes they can be quite, um, piquant. When that lady starts shooting, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't shoot at her roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's only got the one.
you say it. It sounds so unlike. All the same, it is true. God had a... He ripped his own work to pieces. I have ripped my own life to pieces. Why can't I rip my life's work into pieces, too? So that's what you did last night. Yes. You heard me into a thousand pieces. And I throw them out into the fjord, far out. The currents drive them to the open sea, to the storms, the wind. Eventually, they'll sink deeper and deeper, just like me, Sam. You know, both work that book. For the rest of my life, it will be as though you killed a little child. Did murder a child. But how could you? That child was partly mine too. All gone then. Yes, yes. I'm going now, Hannah. Can you? I don't know myself what I'm doing. Everything is dark. Don't you want to take her home, Mr. Lufthorne? The people can take a close look at us together. I don't know what else happened last night, but was it something really so irredeemable? It's not just about last night. Certain of that. I can't live life as I once did. I can't! Or I, I had the courage and the will to live life against every rule. That's when she broke it. Sweet little fools got her fingers round a man's face. But how could you treat her so harmlessly? Oh, tell me it was harmless. After she'd lived inwardly without passion for so long, you destroyed the one thing that had quickened her senses. I, I call that heartless. I can tell you the truth. The truth? But first, promise me, give me your word, Thale will never promise me you won't tell Thale. You have my word. Good. So, and I have to tell you that what I said earlier was not true. Not. About the manuscript. Yes. I didn't tear it to pieces. I didn't throw them in the fjord either. <clears throat> well, all right, then. Where, where is it? Destroyed it all the same. Totally in atom. I don't understand. They have said what I did was like killing a child. Yes, that's what she said. But killing a child isn't the worst thing a father can do. That's not the worst. That's why I lied to Thea. So what is the worst thing a father can do? Just suppose, Hedda. Suppose a man comes home from a wild night out toward morning. Comes home to the mother of his child. Says, listen, sweetheart. been here, I've been there, someplace or another, and I had our child with me, someplace or another, and I lost our child, just lost it, and damned if I know, got their hands, got their fingers into it. But really, we're talking about a book. Thea's entire soul is in I understand! Then you must understand that between her and I there is no future. What way will you go now? No way. Just watch how I put an end to the entire story. The sooner the better. I can... Listen, couldn't you somehow convince yourself that it was a thing of beauty? Beauty, the you. My crown of grapevines you always want no, to see. No, not the crown. I don't believe in it anymore. What I believe 
the beauty. Just this once. Farewell, you should go now and never return. Farewell, madam. My regards to Jürgen Tessman. Wait, wait, wait. Please, take this memento to remember me back. This is my memento. Do you recognize it? I aimed it at you once. Yes, you should have used it then. Yes, well, you make use of it now. Thank you. <laughs> and I learned Burning up your child, Thea. You and your curly head. Your child. I learned a child. I'm, I'm burning. I'm burning up your child. Morning colors. My poor sister's suffering is finally ended. Yes, uh, I've already heard, as you can see. Jorgen sent me a card to let me know. Yes, he promised me he would, but I thought that I should come to see Hedda here in this house of life and tell you about Rena's death myself. That was very friendly of you. Oh, if only Rena had been able to hold on just a little longer. And his house should be spared from grief at this time. But she died so peacefully, didn't she, Miss Tessman? Oh, it was so beautiful. It was so peaceful, her passing. Along with the unspeakable happiness of being able to see Jürgen one last time to have a proper goodbye. Isn't he home yet? No, he, he wrote not to expect him back anytime soon. Please, uh, sit down. No, thank you, my dear, my blessed Hedda. I'd, I'd like to, but I have so little time. I have to make sure that everything is ready and tidied up as, as well as I can manage it. She needs to be laid to rest properly. Can't I help with something? No, no. Hedda Tesman need not lend a hand to something like this. Oh, and she shouldn't be thinking about such things either, not at a time. Yes, yes. yes, thinking about such things. They don't really let you. Yes, yes, that's the way of the world at home. We have to stitch up a burial shroud for Rena 
And there'll be something to stitch up here too, I should think. I haven't had to do it with it, so thank God. Greetings. <laughs> Not another word about that. Well, it's good you're finally here. Aunt Eula with Hedda. Fancy that. I was just about to leave, my dear boy. So, have, have you taken care of everything you promised me? Oh, I'm afraid I forgot half the things. I'm all confused today. I, I can't keep track of my thoughts. My dear Jurgen, you don't need to take it so far. Really? How do you think I should take it? You should be happy in your grief. Happy. What has happened, just as I am? Yes, yes, you're thinking of Aunt Rina. I suppose it's going to be very lonely for you, Miss Tesla. Oh. Yes, at first. Oh, but it shouldn't last long, I, I should hope. Our poor little Remus little room. It it won't be empty for long, I think. Someone will move in there, yeah. And there's always another poor invalid in need of nursing and care, unfortunately. Would you really want to bear a cross like that again? A cross? God forgive you. My dear child, it was never a cross for me. Just a complete stranger. One soon makes friends with the sick. And as for me, I really need someone to live for. Oh, God be praised, in this house there will probably always be work for an old aunt. Not another word about that, please. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if the three of us could be together if... If? Oh, never mind. It'll all work itself out, yeah? Yes, yes, you two have things to talk about, and... Hedda may have something to tell you, Jürgen. Farewell. We have to be getting home to Rina. Oh, my God, how strange to think of it. Now, Rina is both with me and with our dear departed Jürgen. Yeah, just imagine. Just imagine. I almost think Rena's death affects you most, more than your aunt. Oh, it's not just Rena, it's Eiler that's making me so uneasy. Did something else happen with him? I went by his place this afternoon to let him know the manuscript was in good hands. Yeah. Didn't you see him then? No, he, he wasn't at home. But afterward, I met with Mrs. Elfstead, and she said he'd been here this morning. Yes, right after he left. And she told me that, she told me that he told her that he tore the manuscript up, yeah? Yes, he said that. My God, he was out of his mind. Surely, surely you didn't dare get it back to him. No, he did not get it. But you must have told him that we had it. No. Did you say something to Mrs. Elston? No, I, I, I didn't want to, but... But him, you should have told him about the manuscript. My God, what if, his, what if his madness leads to despair? What did you do with the manuscript, Hedda? I'll run it over to him now. Where did you put it? I don't have it anymore. You don't have it? What, what do you mean by that? I burned it. The whole thing, every last scrap. You burned it! You burned Eilert's Don't manuscript! shout! The maid can hear you. You burned it? But... No, 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 no. This is uh, utterly inconceivable. It, it, it's an impossibility. Yeah, that's how it is. Hedda, you know what you've done. I, it's unlawful destruction of property. Just imagine. Just ask Judge Brock. He'll tell you. Well, that's certainly good advice, but you're not going to say anything. Not to the judge, and not to anyone else. But how could you do something so unspeakable? Well, what on earth were you, were you thinking of? What on earth were you trying to do? You have to answer me that, yeah? I did it for your sake, Jorgen. For my sake? But you told me this morning how he had read to you. 
Yeah. So? You confess that you envied him his work. My God, that wasn't meant literally. All the same, I couldn't let another man overshadow you like that. So it's true what you say, Hedda. Yes, but... Yes, but... You've never shown your love for me this way. Hedda. Yes, well, I need to tell you. I need to tell you that... No, 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 no. You ask Aunt Hula, she'll tell you. I think I understand you, Hedda. No, but... But, my God, hey, do you think it's really possible? Don't yeah. shout! The servant can hear you. The servant. The servant. It's burnt. I'll go tell him myself. I, I am dying. I am dying in all of this. In what, Hedda? In what? In all of this comedy, Jorgen. Comedy? Ha! <laughs> because I'm so cheerful? All the same, per perhaps it's better not to tell Bert. Come on. Why not him, too? No, no, not just yet. But, look, you're starting to call me Jürgen. Oh, Aunt Eula is going to be so happy. She's going to be so happy when she hears. When she hears that I burned Eilert Lubeborg's manuscript for your sake? Well, no. Uh, but that's true, too. The thing about the manuscript... Of course, no one could know about that. But that you're in love with me, Hedda. Aunt Eula has to know about that. The, the other thing. Perhaps such behavior is common in young wives, yeah? <laughs> Maybe Aunt Eula will know. Yes, I'll, I'll have to ask her sometime. It's just... It's just Oh my god, it's terrible when you think about it. For poor Eilert, all the same. Oh, dear Heather, don't be mad at me for coming back. What have you been doing, Thea? Not something to do with Loveport again, yeah? Yes, and I'm, I'm terribly afraid something has happened to him. You think so? Oh, well, why would you say that, Mrs. Huffston? Well, I heard them talking about him in the hotel just as I was coming in. Oh, there are the most unbelievable rumors going around about him in town today. Oh, just imagine I heard the same thing, and I can testify he went straight home to bed. Well, what, what were they saying at the hotel? Well, I couldn't really get anything definite. Whether they, they knew more or not, they all got quiet when they saw me, and I didn't dare ask them anything. Oh, we can but hope. We can... But hope that you misheard them, Mrs. Elston. No, no, I'm sure it was him they were talking about. And there was something having to do with the hospital. The hospital? No, that, that's not possible. Oh, I, I was so terribly afraid for him. I went to where he was staying and asked after him there. You were able to do that? There. Yes, of course, I, I couldn't bear the uncertainty. But, but you didn't see him. I mean, yeah? No, and, and the people there, they didn't know anything. They said he hadn't been there since yesterday, they said. Yesterday? Just imagine that. Imagine them saying that, Hedda. I can hear. Something must have happened to him. That's the only explanation. Oh, Hedda, what do you say I go into town and ask around at a couple of places, yeah? No. Don't you go and get mixed up in this. Oh, it's you, Judge Brock. Yes, I, I meant to come to see you earlier this afternoon. I see you got the news from Aunt Eula. Oh, yes. Yes, I got the news. Hey, it's pretty sad, yeah? Well, it depends on how you look at it, my dear Tester. Why, has something else happened? Yes. Something sad, Judge Roth. It depends on how you look at it, Mrs. Tester. Oh, it's I like look for it. Why would you say that, Mrs. Elstead? Might you know something else? No, no, I, I don't at all, but... I... My God, just say it, yeah? Well, unfortunately, Eilert Lubor has been taken to the hospital. He's dying. Oh my God. The hospital? Yes. He's dying? So soon. We were still quarreling, Hannah. But they are, they are. I, I must go see him. I must see him while he's still alive. Oh, that won't do you any good, madam. 
They're not letting anyone see him. Oh, just tell me what happened. What's wrong? Yeah, surely he didn't hurt himself. I'm quite sure that he did. Unfortunately, you've guessed correctly, Mrs. Tessman. When did it happen, Judge Bob? Uh, this afternoon, between three and four. God, he did it himself. Uh, but where did it happen? He Jeff? shot himself. You've guessed right again, madam. <laughs> At his lodgings, probably. No, no, that can't be right, because I was, I was there between six and seven. Somewhere else, then. I don't know exactly. All I do know is that when they found him, he shot himself in the chest. No, oh, no, I, I can't. I can't think of it. How could he end that way? In the chest? Yes, like I said. Not through the temple? In the chest, Mrs. Tessman. Yes, of course, but just as good, too. How do you mean, madam? Oh, nothing, nothing. And you say it's fatal? Yeah? Oh, it's an undoubtedly fatal wound. Most likely it's already over. Yes, yes, I can feel it. It's over. But, over. but how do you know all this? From the police. I had to talk to them. Finally, an act. What are you saying, Hedda? I'm saying that there's beauty in this. This is Desmond? Beauty? Really? Hedda, how can you talk about beauty with something like this? I learned that Borg has settled his own accounts. He had the courage to do what had to be done. No, no, I, I, I won't believe it happened like that. What he did, he did in just a temporary state of madness. It was desperation. No, it wasn't, I'm sure. Yes, it was. And it was a moment of madness when he tore our book to pieces. The, the book? The manuscript, you mean? But he tore it to pieces. Yes, he did it last night. We're never getting out of this. This is very strange. Just think, Eiler is leaving us. And without even leaving behind the thing that would make his name. If only it could be put back together again. If only it could. I don't know what I'd give. It could in the end, Mr. Tessman. What are you saying, Mrs. Elston? Here. Look, look here. These are all the sheets of paper I, I kept when he was dictating. You, you saved them. Mrs. Elston. These are all the notes. I, I took them when I left. They've been in my bag the entire time. Oh, let me see what there is. They're all mixed up. They're such a mess. If we... We could go all through, through this. Maybe if we've helped one another. We should try in any case. We will. We must. I, I'll stake my life on it. You, York. Your life. Yes, well... Better to say all the time that I have available. I'll have to put off my own research. You understand? This is something that I owe Island's memory. Yes, perhaps. But now we can go through all this together. Mrs. Elstead, oh my God, no sense brooding over the past, yeah? We'll comfort our souls again yes, by... Yes, Mr. Tessman, I, I will do my best. Yes, we should, we should begin on this immediately. But where should we sit? Uh, here. No, no, in that room. You must excuse us, Judge Brock. Hedda? Come. Only if you run. Mm, Judge Brock? I learned Lubeborg. There is such a feeling of liberation. Liberation? Yes, you could say he has liberation. A feeling of liberation for me. To know that a voluntary act of bravery is still possible in this world. You know, you know an act that shines with involuntary beauty. This is Desmond. I know what you want to say. Because you're kind of a professional man yourself. Just like, well, spit it out. Eilert Lubeborg meant more to you than you care to admit to yourself. Or oh, am I mistaken? I don't answer such questions. I only know that Eilert Lubeborg had the courage to live his life on his own terms. And so a great man ends in beauty. Somebody who had the strength and the will to leave this rich life so early. 
It pains me, Mrs. Hennett, to be forced to pull you from your delusion. My delusion? From something you'd be pulled from soon enough. Oh? He didn't shoot himself. He didn't? No. The thing with either Lubor did not happen, as I said. Did you leave something out, Judge Ruffle? What was it? Out of poor Mrs. Elmstead, I used a couple of uh, circumlocations. What kind? Well, first, he's already dead. In the hospital? Yes, and without regaining consciousness. What else did you conceal? That the affair did not play out in his room? What difference does that make? What difference, I can tell you. I the blue board was found shot in Miss Diana's boudoir. No. That's impossible. He couldn't have been there today. He was there this afternoon. He had gone to get some things he said she had taken from him. I was terribly confused. Something about a missing child. That's why. And at first, I thought he must have been his manuscript, but he destroyed it himself. It must have been his wallet. Yes, it must have been. And, and, and there, that was where they found him. Yes, there, and with a freshly fired pistol in his breast pocket. He'd been fatally shot. In the chest, yeah. No, no. He'd been shot lower in the abdomen. The basin absurd lies over everything I touch that <coughs> curse. Yes, well, there's something else, Mrs. Hannah. Something else that leads to the squalor of it all. Well, what? The pistol he had on him. Well, what then? Stolen it. No, he didn't. It's impossible otherwise, Mrs. Hedick. He must have stolen it. Hedda, it's, uh, it's almost impossible to see anything underneath that hanging lamp. Just imagine. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, might we use your writing desk for a bit? Be my guest. No, wait, let me straighten up first. Oh, there's no need. There's, there's plenty of room. No, I insist. Just let me move this um, over here. There you go. All right, sweet fan, how's the Eilert Lufborg Memorial coming? That's going to be terribly difficult putting it all right. But we must try. And anyway, putting together someone else's papers, that's just the job for me. <laughs> Explanation is impossible, Mrs. Hannah. I see. Now, it's, it's true that either Newport was here earlier this morning. Yes. And were you alone with him? Yes, for a while. Did you leave the room while he was here? No. Well, think about it. Not even for a moment. Yes, maybe for a brief moment in the, in the foyer. And where was your pistol case? I had it. Yes, Mrs. Hedda? It was over there on the desk. Did you check to see if both pistols were in the case? No. Well, you needn't. I saw the pistol Lou Board had with him, and I recognized it immediately from yesterday, and from before that, too. Do you have it? No, I don't have it. The police have it. What will the police do with the pistol? Oh, we'll try to find the owner. Do you think he'll turn up? <laughs> no, Hedda Gobbler. Not as long as I remain. Silent. And if you don't remain silent, what, what then? You can always say the pistol was stolen. I'd rather die. <laughs> People say such things, but they don't do them. And if it comes out that the pistol was not stolen, and the owner turns up, what, what comes next? Well, next comes the scandal, Mrs. Hennessy. The scandal? Yes, yes, the scandal. The one you're so deathly afraid of. You have to go to court, of course. You and Miss Diana, you have to testify as to the facts of the case. Was it a uh, misfire or a deliberate shot? Did he pull the pistol out in order to threaten her, or was it a wild shot? Or did she grab the pistol from his hand, shoot him, and put the pistol back into his pocket? Now, you can see her doing something like that. This disgusting affair has nothing to do with me. No. no but you'll still have to answer the question. Why? Why did you give the gun to Lubor? 
Then what conclusions might be made from the fact that you did give it to him? That is true. I had not thought of that. Yes, well, fortunately, you are in no danger as long as I remain silent. <laughs> so I'm in your hands, Judge Brock. In your grip, tooth and claw. Well, dearest Hannah, you could trust me. I shall not abuse my position. But in your grip, dependent upon your desire and your will, your slave, a slave. No, I cannot bear it ever. Oh, but sometimes we, we must accept the inevitable. Yes, perhaps. Can we pull it off then, Jorgen? Yes, but it will take many, many months of work. Isn't this wonderful for you, Thea? Now you can sit here with Tessman, just like you used to sit with Eilert Luthborg. God, yes, if, if only I could inspire your husband like that. <laughs> Give it time. Yes, but, uh, Hedda, it seems I'm really on the verge of something here. Um, go talk with the judge some more. Can't I help you too? Isn't there anything I, I can help with here? No, nothing. Judge Brock. Can I rely on you to keep Hedda entertained? <laughs> oh, most extraordinary pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much, but I'm tired now. I just want to go in the other room and lie down. Yeah, you do that, sweetheart. to see us at this sad task. I know. Mrs. Elstead, you should move in with Aunt Eula. That way, I can come over in the evenings and we can work on this day. Yes, perhaps that would be for the best. I can hear what you're saying, Tessman, but how should I survive the evenings out here? Oh, Judge Brock is gracious enough, and he'll be visiting you anyway. Each and every evening, Mrs. Tessman. <laughs> we'll get along fine, just the two of us. Yes, perhaps you have that hope, Judge Brock. Cock up the walk. Oh, she's just fooling around with her pistols again. Ah! She shot herself. She shot herself in the temple. Oh, merciful God. People just don't do such things.